Welcome to the Radiant Preneur Rising Show with me, Jess Tomlinson. Interviews to inspire a new movement of leaders and entrepreneurs. The ones who lead with vulnerability and authenticity, stand in visibility, allowing themselves to truly be seen, are fierce and playful and sexy. Choose business as a spiritual practice. Seek collaboration versus competition. No giving back is not an option. It's a necessity. They do it their way. They radiate. They rise. Now, let's rise together. All right. Welcome, everyone, back to the Radiant Premier Rising Show. I'm Jess Tomlinson. I'm so excited to have a guest here today that I believe is going to give us a really cool perspective that maybe we don't get all the time because she's both in education, nonprofit, entrepreneurship. She's in all the different worlds of business. And uh, usually on this show, we focus on just entrepreneurs. And I love having different perspectives. And I'm so grateful to have Tanya Monseth here. She was introduced to us by a previous guest, Judith Martinez of In Her Shoes. And so welcome, Tanya. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm honored to be with you today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, So I definitely want to hear a little bit about your story because we are just getting to know each other. But let's start with the one question that I do ask um, all of our guests. And I'm so interested how you're going to be sharing this since you're in all these different worlds of business. And uh, that is how are you leaning in to your visibility edges? So we talk a lot about visibility on the show. That's my zone of genius in business is how are you showing up in your full leadership and all of your visibility? Um, so what about you? What's, what's up for you around visibility? That's a great lately? question. Um, I think for visibility to me means uh, being confident enough to share who you are wherever you are. And so for me, my, the visibility shows up for me is both online and offline. So I kind of feel like who I am is whether you met me in person or you meet me online, I'm, I'm pretty much the same person. Um, and I think the interesting thing is I think um, I'm over 50 now. And so I think age has actually helped me in my visibility. I've, I've just become more settled into who I am and okay. unabashedly uh, comfortable with sharing all of who I am. And I, I think sometimes we think about visibility in terms of business life versus personal life. And um, We'll, we'll talk a little bit, I guess, about my story. But for me, the lines between personal and professional are very um, seamless, and and they yeah. seem to be very integrated in a way that it's easy for me to just be who I am, whether I'm in business or you know I'm with friends and family. I'm pretty much the same person. I show up that way, and so I think being visible means for me really just being authentic about who you are and yeah. and owning it. So that's been something I think probably in the last 10 years that has become something very comfortable for me. I um, was part of a a startup called Global Niche. And at that time I was living abroad. I was um, an expat living in Turkey, Istanbul. And we had started this company around the idea of, you know, there's all these expats and people all over the world who need to be found and you need to kind of build a tribe and a community and you may not be in a place where you know people or you have connections so how can you actually be visible online in a way that can help you build your community and so um, we really tapped into the power of the internet and building groups and and really finding a place to to show up in a way that is authentic and and shows who you are and we did it really for for people who who were somehow physically not in a place where their tribe was. So like, how do you be visible and how do you find a tribe somehow? Um, If you're, you might be in Minnesota or something and um, maybe you want to be a book editor and you should be in New York, but you can't because of whatever reason. So how do you be visible in wherever you are kind of bloom where you're planted? Yeah. Wow. I love that. And, and what did you discover um, during supporting them in that? It, I think the, the biggest thing I discovered was just how powerful when you're very clear about who you are and what you have to offer the world, how 
it's almost magnetic and um, people are drawn to you. And so it seems hard. Um, and a lot of the things that we really worked on was having people take down their masks and get comfortable being visible to your point. Uh, and, and people think, Oh, I have to go create all this stuff. And, and we used to, we used to say, you know, you have, you have like this gold that you've created in your life, whether you're 20 or you're 50 or however old you are and really leveraging that. So we used to call it like mine for the gold, like really look at the gold of who you are and where you are and, and start to start to tell a story to people so that they can understand who you are and what you have to offer. Um, my personal like vision for the world is that everybody's unique gifts and talents are celebrated and treasured in the world. And so I want for me, my personal, I think my purpose in life is to support people in really finding who they are and, and having them share that with the world. Cause I think everyone brings something very unique that they have to offer the world. And so I'm really passionate about supporting people in that process and that journey. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. That I would say is my mission too, mm. with a focus around self-expression because that's yeah. really been my journey. And I love what you're saying here. It's really about removing those masks and not trying to, you know, oftentimes people will talk about visibility, like, oh, you need to do something or be something or um, really there's this tension in the feeling of how they're wanting people to quote unquote be visible and really it sounds like me and you are in alignment with like it, it's not about doing that it's really about going within and saying how can I just give myself permission to show up in all of my uniqueness and everything that's already here because that's where the gold is as you said exactly yeah we I, there was a woman in our community she had something with it was cats that she was doing, right? And it was like, she's like, well, how can I make this into a business or whatever? And we're like, just just start playing with it, right? Like just yeah. start exploring who you are and sharing that with the world. And, you know, she was able to build this community around her. And I mean, it's all different. We had all different types of people, people writing cookbooks and doing documentaries and, um, you know, doing all different kinds of things. And I think that's, I mean, I feel like we're in a really special place and time of this, where you really have the ability to be visible in a way that works for you and, mm -hmm. and to do it in a way that you want to do it on your own terms. I mean, I think, you know, I don't know, I'm older than you, but I think, you know, if I wanted to go communicate with somebody, I, you know, would have to go through certain channels. And now with social media and, um, and just technology, we're able to really have direct access. Like to me, the democratization of, of really the, of the world, I guess, and, yeah. and having, accessibility in a way that we haven't had before allows you to really be visible in a way that that gives you control over it yeah yeah I love that you said that around the democratization because yeah. I think back to you know my early days in corporate I was in marketing um and I would I have to go about all these different ways calling back in the day, right? Like, yes, I could like look on the internet and try to find a phone number or an email, but it wasn't like social media was really a huge way or even acceptable of reaching out to people during that time. And now it, yes, it's like accessibility and really breaking down those walls of making connections with maybe people that you felt like were even unreachable, you know, um, whether that's, mentor or somebody that you want to partner with or you know have on your online summit for example I was just interviewing um, someone and we were talking about online summits and really moving through your own visibility fears of reaching out to somebody that might seem like they're above you right if we want to label it like in business and that there's options to be able to do that now and so I love I love that perspective yep I think it's really important um, and I think I think we're a lot of us are still caught in those paradigms. Um, I was just traveling kind of around the world, and I mean, I think America we're we're lucky in the school system where you can challenge your teachers and you can challenge, you know, you can challenge things and ask questions. And I, I was in some countries where you you really can't do that, and you have to align by the hierarchy of the systems and those types of things. So I think we're we are blessed here in the United States to have kind of that also that kind of upbringing where you can you can really just do it is what it is what you want to do. Which is nice. Yeah. And I, I still run across people, not like you probably, who um, are feel confined and feel like, oh, I can't, I can't do that or I don't know how to do that. And mm -hmm. um, and so I think there's still 
an awakening yet to happen. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, I definitely have my own, you know, visibility. I <laughs> just like, we teach what we need to learn. Right. Yeah. And so it's like a constant, like one of the things that I'm really passionate about talking about is that we are constantly evolving and we should be, you know, if we're, if we're not, then we're not growing, we're not living this life to the fullest. And so part of visibility is allowing ourselves to grow and change as we grow and change. And so it's, it's, I love what you were saying that there was like a very fine line in it between like life and business because I have the same policy. It's like, look, that is where the freedom is. Like just being who you are and not being like, I need to be this way in life and I need to be this way in business because that's so constricting, you know, and it's like energetically draining. Um, a lot of effort to keep those two yeah. things separate. And I mean, you want to be careful, right? I mean, you don't want to, I mean, I think there is a line of, of even... Uh, you know, private and public and kind of what you're willing to share. And certainly yeah. my inner circle knows me more than maybe you could find me online or, you know, when you first meet me. But I think, I think you definitely have to be cautious of that too. And, and I think also these days, especially online, you have to be careful from a protection standpoint is to not, not put yourself at risk because there is risk. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, safety. It's like one of the things I work with my clients on is really how do you create safety within yourself? And then also you feel good enough and you processed enough, like say if, if they're sharing their personal story, right? Like you've done everything in your own life to, you know, make amends or, or clean up things, or you've done the work right? And then you have created safety for yourself to be able to share the pieces and you don't have to share it all, right? But to share the pieces that will really serve and that might still feel vulnerable to share, but you have, you feel solid enough in, you know, what you've worked through that you've, you holding back is no longer an option for the people that I serve, right? Because they want to help people. They want to share their stories and how they've gone through it. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about your story then. Like how, you know, you're in all these amazing worlds, you're in education, yeah. like, like how did you land in, um, in this life of supporting people and women and business in all these different ways? So I actually, I'm going to go back to like my childhood, actually. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I'm the parent of, um, of immigrants to the United States actually, and they were very entrepreneurial. And so my parents had, actually a restaurant business when I was growing up. And so I was raised with, I think, a very entrepreneurial mindset mm. and, and raised with the belief that you could do anything. Um, and also that education was really important. I think those are the two foundations that I was raised with. And so I came to college and, um, and I actually had a career, I, I majored in finance and then had a career. I was really passionate and knew from a very young age I wanted to be in corporate finance. And so I was an executive in, in corporate finance and, and marketing and did that for a while and had kids and that whole thing. And then I, I just was looking at kind of the next phase of my life. My kids were kind of getting older and I thought, you know, what's kind of next for me? And um, actually, I think like most entrepreneurs, I, I stumbled upon a, a solution actually that had to do with reading. And um, so decided that, hey, this could actually be a company. Um, the solution was really innovative. It was, at that time, it was very much geared around uh, a reading solution for dyslexic children. Oh, wow. And, um, and it was, you know, we could have a 40% improvement immediately from what we were doing. And so, and, and that, we, we played around with that for a little while, but it didn't end up working. It actually has just recently um, been revived. So I'm, I'm sitting on an advisory board for that, which I'm so happy. Oh, about. wow. But, Great. So the product's called Readability Matters. So it's about how readability actually affects um, your ability to comprehend and participate in reading. So I did that for a while. And then I met a woman actually who had been focused on um, global leadership and had started a, an organization called the Global Women's Leadership Network. And I met her and literally the day I met her, I'm like, oh my God, I've met my tribe. I like, I've like, finally, I've like, 
and, and I didn't even know I was looking for it, but I, I just had this kind of aha moment. And really from that time have pivoted. So for the last 15 years, I've been working predominantly in women's leadership globally. So I've worked with leaders from about 40 countries. Um, and it was originally that program had started, was incubated here at Santa Clara University, which is my alma mater also. So oh, it's cool. very Art in that way, and um, can continued working with that, and became an executive coach, and really felt like you know really wanting to support both men and women. Um, I, I tend to be passionate about women only because I think there is a disparity for women, and that there needs to be some emphasis put on that. But I also think in this age of the Me Too movement, I think um, there are a lot of men who are awakening and, and wanting to be responsible. And, and so I do work with men as well and, and, and really mm. enjoy that as well. But my passion right now, what I focus on predominantly is leadership work. So um, and that takes a lot of different forms. So it's really supporting people in becoming authentic um, visionary leaders that can, can do something transformative for the world and or maybe for their lives in and what that is and so it for me it's so much fun to do so um i i've been working in india for the last two years with a group of 22 women there on a project oh and uh, so yeah so it's just what is that project um it's actually it's funded by the gates foundation it's called the collective yeah. impact partners oh, and we wow. brought together um the organization i was chair of the board for we brought together five nonprofits. Um, who all had a unique offering, actually. So they each had a different aspect, but all with the same vision. And the vision is a world in which all women experience equity. That's politically, socially, and economically. And we decided to work together. And we, um, we had a project, we have a project funded by the Gates Foundation that we're working with in India with 22 women on economic empowerment. And so it's been, it's been great, really great. That's amazing. Yeah. I interviewed with them actually, right when I was out of college. I was so bummed. It was the only offer I didn't get from all the places I interviewed. And I was yeah. like, man. They're um, doing great work. I mean, there's some really yeah. good And they're kind of studying us right now because this is a pilot for them. Typically they give money to like maybe a large nonprofit and that nonprofit then subs out. But we're five nonprofits coming together as a collective. So they're- oh, I love that. But, yeah, I'm really, um, I'm really passionate about that also. I, I think, especially having been in the nonprofit world, there tends to be this, mm, like, we do this and, you know, don't talk to our donors. And, yep. and there's so much synergy. And I mean, I think about that even from an entrepreneurial standpoint, how important it is to tap into an ecosystem and, to, and a supply chain of, you know, all the people that can support you in your journey. And so I'm really excited that we've brought this together and we're, you know, we're studying it for ourselves and figuring it out. What does it take mm -hmm. to do that? There's been bumps along the way, but we've learned a lot and really grateful for the team that we have that we put together. Really great. So, yeah, so I think I'm on my, I think I'm on my third career now, I think. <laughs> wow. and, uh, I did a TED talk and um, I really feel like, you know, in, I don't know how old you are, but I feel like I, I teach at the university and so yeah. I teach business students and, and I tell them, I, you know, you're going to probably have 10 careers. So learning is like, this is just the start of your journey. It's not going to yeah. be, and like when you graduate, that's not the end of your education. Yeah. You have to continue to really stretch and, um, and integrate and be creative. And I mean, it is the way of the world. So I guess I, I think I've always had, you know, a side hustle. I think before that was a thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Since, I don't know, probably high school I've had that. I've always worked and, and done something interesting. And so for me, I get, I don't want to say I get bored, but I, 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 am, I have such a curious mind. And mm -hmm. so I really, I love to learn new things. I love to meet new people. I love to experience, um, mm -hmm. I love to experience the world. It really is what I love. And so mm -hmm. for me, it's just fun to, to take you know, who I am as a business person and my intellect, but, you know, channel that into something that also ties into my, my passion. So, right. So aligning my purpose and passion yeah. um, in a very, very integrated way. So we'll I see. And I think there's probably something next for me, but I don't know what it is yet. Yeah. This is just so inspiring for me. I, I'm 35. And so okay. I've had tons of, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know, you know, I was, I started out in, um, in public relations, that was my degree, and worked for a small little firm in Seattle, which is where I'm from. And then I moved to Las Vegas for a media marketing job where I worked in magazines, newspapers, websites. 
um, and did more of the um, the branding and supporting the sales team side um, and events like all that, you know. Um, and then I moved into um, human resources, employee culture, um, and started the first culture group at um, Allegiant Airlines. Um, and that was really an amazing journey. I was there for about seven years. So that was like my longest kind of career. And then um, during that whole time, I was building my business too. So I've always kind of like had like either women's groups or I produced, I think I told you in the email when we were connecting, I produced three TEDx women events in Las Vegas. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, I, I can so relate. I'm curious, what is your, what is your astrological sign? I'm a cancer. You are. Ooh. Which is interesting because I think cancers are supposed to be home bodies. I do love my home, but I, I know you seem um, very, um, Aquarian. I'm an Aquarius. And I, do you have a, do you know, like your rising and your moons? Do you know any of that? It's so funny when I was, in okay, age, we're going to have to hook you up. Red, but I, I never oh, you wrote did? Things down, but I don't know what she said. I can't remember actually. Okay, well, we'll have to do it. I'll send you yeah. a free link, and because I, okay. I bet you, you have a lot of Aquarius, because everything that you, you've described, like, is Aquarius is all about collaboration and like, you know, just really like rising together and plugging into different communities. And I see a lot of myself in in you, and it's awesome that you're way more of a wise woman than me, having. Uh -huh. I don't know. This planet longer. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think there's always more to learn. And I think age is, I mean, I'm, I love my age now. I, and I think of age as, as just a number. I don't know. It's somehow this chronological thing, but I don't, I yeah. don't know that it means really much to me anymore. I don't yeah. Know. But I love my age. It's, I would never want to go back. My yeah. mother gave me the biggest gift. She said, every decade gets better. And yeah. so for me, it's, I think there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I don't want to get older. And for me, I'm like, oh, bring it on. Like, you know, there's yeah. more to learn, more to explore. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but we'll have to look at my astrology. I don't know what that is. I know. I'm so curious now. I'm, yes. I'm super curious if you would share, you know, if we go back to kind of just visibility or evolution in general of your, your life path from, you know, how you started to where you are now, what do you feel like were some of like the biggest lessons that you've learned along the way? Hmm. So I think one is I, um, I was willing to take some risks and I didn't know it at the time, but I, I think that's really what it was. And I have a lot of students that say to me, Oh, you know, our young people come to me for mentorship and say, you know, I, I don't know what my passion is. I don't know what I should do. And for me, I'm always like, just try something. And my lessons, actually, if I look at my career at the time and, and my path, almost every move I made was because I got fed up with a place and not because I knew what the next step was, but it was like, it was bad enough that I needed to go do something else. And so, you know, don't be afraid to kind of listen to, even when things are miserable, like there could be the, the next thing could be could be great or it could not be also, but don't be afraid to take the risk, I think, to, yeah. to try the next thing. Um, the other thing too is, I, I mean, I loved your, the way that you started this with visibility. Mm -hmm. And I think I probably in my youth was a little bit ca too cautious and maybe mm -hmm. afraid to really show up and be visible. Um, it wasn't really until probably my uh, probably early 40s where I was like, oh, wait a minute. You know, I want to kind of show people who I am. So I feel like your generation and, and those younger than you, I mean, because of the environment that you lived in um, of being more digitally native and, and more familiar with social media and things like that has allowed that. But I think I still see people that are, that are younger. I, I think don't be afraid to share your vulnerability because yeah. I, I think in, in sharing vulnerability, you create connection. And for me, connection is everything. Like, I don't know, you can collect paychecks and that's great. You can buy a house, whatever. But for me, the richness in my life are the connections in my life. And, and those connections and the deepness of those connections has come through sharing and being vulnerable um, and visible with who I really am and not hiding who I am. And that includes the scars and the mistakes I've made and maybe the wrongs that I've done. 
um, yeah. all those things. So for me, that's, for me, it's the lesson of that vulnerability actually creates very deep connection. And, yeah. and I think, um, I work for another organization called How Women Lead, and, and one of the credos that they have is, you know, anytime a woman asks you for something, say yes. And mm. um, so I, I, I think I, I believe in this. I, I grant trust, and I am, I tend to be very generous in making connections and supporting people, and and I do it because it makes me feel good, like it warms mm. my heart to support other people. Um, and then it also seems to come back to me. I don't do it for that reason, but. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to be generous. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I want to come back to that because there's this collaboration piece that is just so important. Um, but I want to ask you a little bit deeper into, you know, those times in your life before you were 40, where you felt like you couldn't share your vulnerability and you're afraid to be more visible. What were those specific pieces? Like what was your fear around that? I think, I mean, and I think this is also like the, the immigrant side of things too. I think there was always a subtle message of like, don't air your dirty laundry mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like when I was maybe not even subtle, maybe it was explicit, which again, right. I mean, you don't want to share everything, but I think I, I misinterpreted that potentially and thought that, that that meant that I had to hide pieces of who I was and, couldn't be as honest about things with people. I mean, I certainly was with my friends, but, you know, and I think also I probably in my youth spent a little bit of too much time comparing myself to others and not feeling like I was, was good enough. Probably is probably the piece that, that really held me back. And um, I actually, my, around your age, I had a pretty severe um, health kind of interruption in my life. And I think through that, I just was like, you know, I have to surrender. Like this is, <laughs> you know, I can try to hold all this together. And in the end, it's, it's going to kill me in some way. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of that. I mean, it was, there was a bunch of pieces of that, but I think at, at the core of that, it was this needing to kind of do everything to the, you know, best that I could and yeah. perfectionism, but, but more of, of this striving to prove myself always. Yeah, that exactly. became unhealthy. Yeah, um, and it and in some ways it, it it allowed me to have enormous business success because I was so focused and so dedicated. And um, but at at a certain point, it became that strength actually became a shadow for me. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of facing that shadow side of of you know there's a light and dark to everything. And so while it was really light and gave me like I said a lot of business success and accolades and all those things. Um, the shadow side really, uh, it was, it hurt my, my physical health quite a bit. Yeah. So I had to, I had to really rediscover who I was without having to be that Uber, um, Uber achiever, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can relate. I have a similar story that I'm grateful I learned really early um, in my in my 20s um, all through my entire life I had these massive like since I was you know preteen even massive stomach pains uh -huh. that I nobody could explain and that would make me throw up and I would just be like you know feel these like stabbing in my stomach and it continued through college and continued through my early 20s. And finally, I was like, like, I started getting in the realm of, you know, spirituality and self-development. I'm like, oh, my God, this is not a health thing. Like, this is an emotional thing. <laughs> and it was from my need to prove, to achieve, to, you know, receive love through being what everybody else, what I thought everybody else wanted me to be, right? Um and then I had all these, my first public speaking talk actually was about expectations, and like really allowing ourselves to release expectations that we have, you know, set this high for ourselves and that we think other people have set for us and just, oh, um, because of my journey around that. And it was so crazy because I had all these, um, like I had the micro, I forget what it's called now, um, but the micro, micro, like to put like a camera. Yeah, the camera, like down your throat and like in your belly and like, you know, it was this whole like thing. 
Um, and they're like, we didn't find anything. <laughs> and of course, right? And um, it's so amazing because I don't get, like I still hold tension in my tummy. If I'm stressed, I'm very aware, you know, but I don't get those stomach pains anymore. And like, um, it's amazing how impacted our health and our bodies can become when we are, you know, striving, improving and yep. And so yeah, freeing. The, the last maybe seven or eight years I've been studying Ayurveda. Yeah. Kind of wow. Really been looking at kind of um of kind of that connection of really health and you know yeah. mind, body, spirit all together and how integrated they are. And um, yeah. yeah. I mean it's beautiful that you had that lesson early. I think that yeah. was Probably was didn't feel like it maybe at the time, but that is a blessing. It's in it. Yeah. Yeah. I quickly turned it into, you know, helping other people though. My first business was around self-care. Mm. And um because of, you know, that whole reason, I'm like, oh my God, people need to know this. And you know, like we're all suffering and wondering. I mean, not all of us, but many women especially, right, are suffering and having these bodily pains and health crises and like you know and then I look at the business world and many of my entrepreneurial friends who are having adrenal fatigue and burnout and just these massive crashes from yeah. that you know non-stop hustle yep that's exactly yeah. right yeah it's interesting I mean it's I think there's still a lot to be learned right even the medical profession I feel like is I was I, was, yeah. I just went to something and Andrew Dr. Andrew Weil was there speaking and and he said, I'm looking for the day where we don't have to use the word integrative medicine anymore. That it's just, that is part of the medicine, right? That, oh, that yeah. the East and the West kind of integration is just part of, part of the health solution. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I think it's coming. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's definitely coming. There's a, I agree with you. There is an awakening and like even my, you know, 10 years of, Kind of doing this whole leadership and being in the public eye thing it's really beautiful to see more and more people at least stepping up and saying you know how can i let go of these masks how can i create trust and safety within myself to actually show up and really be seen and yeah it's, yep. it's really beautiful yeah, i think it's all part of the journey right just yeah there's always more to learn more to see and oh my gosh totally I, I always, I, for me like every day is Christmas I think like okay what's the gift today that I'm going to get and you know what's mm. this bring for me so it's I think it's really cool you can reinvent yourself every day which is really a nice thing to be able to to have yeah. not be stuck yeah. not feel stuck yeah not feel stuck right it all comes back to the feeling you know like it, like in both of our journeys, you can have all these things and be achieving and doing, doing, doing. But at the end of the day, it's like, how are you actually feeling? That's where the fulfillment comes from, right? Yes, very much so. And for me, like, like we started, I, I think connection for me is really, really important. Cause me too. I, mean, I think, I don't know. I'm, I was in, I think seven countries in the last six weeks and. Oh my God. I, wow. Every, but everybody is so everybody's just figuring it out. Right. And, and there's different circumstances. It's wrapped. It looks differently, maybe different language, different, um, different circumstances. But I mean, humanity is, is all the same all around the world and we're all trying to figure it out and whatever way that that shows up. And some people yeah. have it more challenging than others, given, given the structure that the systems that they're built born into. Yeah. What but, drew you into the international work? I, I mean, I, I, I've been thinking about this a lot. I think it had to do probably with my upbringing because I'm yeah. two different cultures and, um, and then had to navigate the American culture kind of, you know, on my own, so to speak. Uh, I just, it's very comfortable for me to kind of slot into any other culture and, and to really listen for the humanity and not, not get wrapped up in the oh, they don't have enough, or there's this and that. And yes, I mean, there's a lot of work that needs to get done, especially in developing countries, but there's also a lot of joy there too. A lot, yes. of, connection, a lot of deep connection in a way that I think we miss here. So yeah. um, I have a partner that's in the Gambia who her, her mission is always to have people see 
have people see that we're all the same. So whether you're in the Gambia or you're in the United States, it's like, we're all the same. And she wants both the cultures to understand, you know, all the cultures to understand each other. And um, it's, it's amazing how much stuff gets in the way, how much we, um, you know, just the judgments that we have that, and for me, actually, the place that I actually recognize this, when I was living in Turkey, I'm actually half Iranian. Mm. And so I raised kind of with the Middle Eastern, um, I guess, community. So it wasn't weird for me. But, so I went to Turkey and, and I remember I was part of an, it was like a community event, but it was, it was an Islamic focus. And, and I remember thinking like, oh crap, you know, what is this? And, and I realized how programmed I was even just from the media. And I was thinking, mm. wow, I think for, for most people, we all take on these things that we don't even realize we're taking on. Um, yeah. just, there's a constant, we're constantly bombarded with messages and images that, that are defined a certain way. And so for me, it's when I go into a foreign country, I'm, I try to be very mindful of putting aside whatever. I actually don't do a lot of research oftentimes for countries that I go to because I don't want to, I don't want to be clouded by a context that may or may not be what I'm going to experience. And I don't want to go yeah. in with that. So for me, it's very joyful to be um, traveling and, and meeting different people. And, and I learned so much about myself, but I also learn about the, like the kaleidoscope or the tapestry of the world. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I am, I'm just having so much joy listening to you because <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so yeah. similar where one of my very favorite things is just immersing myself into cultures and just, you know, doing my best to learn a little bit of the language where I can, you know, be polite and try to show respect and just like open myself up to like, what can I learn here? And hands down, every time I go to another country, I'm blown away by the level of connection and collaboration and support. And like, I think back to a memory where my mom and I went um, to Italy and we landed in Rome and I was planning on finding our Airbnb on my cell phone, like using the map. And I had forgot to turn off my cell phone on the plane ride, the whole plane ride. And so it, it died. And then I was like, Oh my God, like, you know, we have this address printed out cause I'm, I'm a smart traveler, <laughs> but <laughs> like, Holy cow. Like, how are we going to find this place? Right. And it was amazing. Like I had learned, um, how to say, um, I'm lost. And I think I still remember it. Mi sono persa. Mi sono persa. <laughs> I learned how to say it. Or we need That's to a great it. phrase to always have. Woman, I'm so that. glad I learned that. Like, yeah. I, I just must have known that something was going to happen. And so I learned it. Um, and like five different people just surrounded us immediately. And like, we're all talking and like, like somebody called and then they even waited with us and like, yeah. oh my God, it just, it burst my heart wide open because I, I was like, I don't know if that would have happened here in the U S or it would have been a little bit harder to maybe break the barrier of people in their everyday routine, you know, walking on the streets. I'm busy. I have somewhere to go. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, just taking the time. I mean, I even like, I don't always go to the tourist sites, but I just, I like to go walk a city or sit in a yeah. cafe and talk to people about how they're living. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a gift. It's really a gift. It is such a gift. And and speaking of the joy too, like, you know, I've been to Peru and, mm. and seen like this extreme poverty and yet learned so much about how things don't matter and been amazed by these communities that sing songs and have yeah. so much joy on their face and are so present and yet from the outside looks like they have nothing but yeah. really they have everything it's just oh it makes me tear up because I haven't traveled in a while and I'm like I really want to <laughs> get back to that you know to connect yeah. to that within myself well that's I don't know if you if Jude explained that one of the things I do at Santa Clara is I run a program called the Global Fellows Program, where I send 30 yeah, students yeah. to go do an internship abroad. So I have students mm -hmm. right now who are in India, Ghana, Gambia, 
Morocco, Rwanda, Bolivia, Guatemala. And so they're working for usually um, nonprofits, but some for-profit companies as well, but doing some project there. And, but they're really having to live there for six to eight weeks. And so that's also a beautiful gift too, is to witness someone's transformation of, you know, I, I, I work with them in the spring and teach a class in the spring and they're all there right now. And I went, when I was in India, I got to visit with several of them there, but to watch their level of maturity and understanding and, um, mm. and just to, to have them now come away with the gift to know that they're really capable of anything. But, and mm. that's, that's also another journey to visibility, I think too, right. Is the, yeah. is the, is the opening of what the world actually has to offer and, and knowing that you don't have to just, if you're an accounting major, you don't have to just do accounting, right? You could do, yes. uh, there's other things in the world to experience. And I think sometimes getting outside of your own bubble, or we call it kind of here that the Santa Clara bubble, um, yeah. or the Valley, I think, you know, you're living here now. I, I think I, I spend a lot of time with students to say, you really, really need to look and see what's happening outside the world. I mean, Silicon yeah. Valley is an amazing place. I, there's no doubt about it but there are also amazing things happening around the world and to really open your eyes to what's happening around the world and, um, and all the things that are being generated in other countries and other ways and kind of also scrappy entrepreneurship in a way or like fr we call it here frugal entrepreneurship, which mm. doesn't mean cheap. It just means utilizing resources in an effective manner to really yeah. build innovation. Yeah. So Ooh, let's talk about that. What do you feel like, is is required for people to really i see it as like this wall of isolation that oftentimes entrepreneurs or even businesses like we were talking about nonprofits, kind of isolating themselves and being like you know you stay over there and we're over here like what do you feel like is it, it takes to break down that wall and really welcome in collaboration and partnership and get in being scrappy and, and utilizing your resources I, mean, I think it's first the mindset that you don't know everything. I mean, and I, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, I mean, not everybody has the guts to take those risks. It's not easy to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody has the guts to take it and, or might not be a visionary. That might not be their natural um, way of being, so to speak. Uh, but a lot of people that are get very stuck in like, it's going to be my way. I see this vision. I'm, you know, and they push, 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 which is great too. You have to there is dedication, time, and nurturing that you have to do with your business. But I think you also have to be open to what else is out there. And I mean, it's kind of like when I do a plan with people, right? I think, you know, you, you do this long range plan for people maybe a couple of years out and, and then kind of closer in maybe de detailed milestones. But I always say like, don't be afraid of the escalator that might come along. Like, don't worry about going up the steps. Like there might be an escalator or an elevator that actually takes you up two flights that you didn't anticipate. And, and that actually is usually being open to talking to somebody that you might not normally talk to and, or, you know, talking to different people about different ideas or reading or researching, whatever that is. Um, I, one of the things I do, I talk a lot about is um, building your own personal board of advisors. Mm. I think everybody, especially entrepreneurs need that. So, you know, obviously you have a, a board Ooh, of advisors for your that. company. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's really, and I, I have like 10 things that I think, the 10 types of people like you need like a coach you need somebody who's mm -hmm. who's going to be a realist with you and you need someone who's going to be um you know who's who's a trendsetter in your industry and some of these people may not be people that you actually know maybe you follow them on medium or you follow them on linkedin or um it, it doesn't always have to be someone in person that you know but i think you need to build a community of support around you that actually um, has you opening to other things and and that's how it, i think all things happen in conversation right all new possibilities happen in conversation so mm -hmm. and that can be an actual conversation like you're talking with your mouth or it could be typing um i think going to events is really important i think some people are are really focused on like oh my gosh you need to make that one connection and sometimes it's not that one connection right it's it's those tertiary relationships from that one connection. It might not be that one person, but maybe they know somebody who knows somebody. So, yeah. you know, really always continuing to build your network, I think is really yeah. important. And, and, you know, doing things that inspire you, um, whether that's listening to a podcast or listening to, to videos like you're producing, whatever that is, but finding things that inspire you and, and open up your thinking. Because I think it's really easy. I mean, I've lived, been, 
um, I lived most of my life in Silicon Valley. So it'd be really easy for me to stay here, right? And, and kind of, and we have everything here. There's a lot here. Um, but I'm always looking for, for new things because I think the world is a very colorful place. And I don't want just one spectrum of the, of the color. I want, I want to see a full spectrum. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. What I'm really hearing is it's like letting go of the attachment of what your vision looks like in your eyes. It's like keeping your intention, right? Like this is my intention. This is what I feel like is my, my purpose and what I'm passionate about right now, but letting go of the attachment of how you're going to get there. Right. And yep. Yeah, and really having this openness. And what I'm also hearing is that it really comes down to relationships, mm -hmm. you know, and nurturing the relationships and, and getting curious around who am I supposed to learn from and what's here for me right now to, to you know, soak in the wisdom of, of maybe it's just even a random person you're talking to, right, at a networking event, but there's some spark of something you're supposed to to get from them um, that will support you. Or even going to an art gallery and just, or a museum, right? And just taking in, yeah. I just think, you know, I mean, there's some, there is a power of shifting, yes. shifting your mind and um, not being so boxed in. I love what you said. I mean, I, when I work with, especially in the leadership side is, is really having people get very clear about what their vision is and using the vision as kind of a, a, a light, like a, like a guiding light that kind of draws you towards something but not worried so much about the path. I think people um, get so worried about the path and, and almost like beat themselves up if like I go off the path like or I don't make it on this path or veer off the path that somehow you're wrong. It's yeah. as long as you have that vision that you're working toward, um, yeah. I, think, I think that's the way to, to live life. And I think you're also open to more possibilities that way. You're not stuck in it being a certain way or having it have to be a certain way. Yeah, this is so important. You know, I, I really feel like everyone listening needs to hear this. Um, I don't think it's talked about enough. And I know I've had to even do my own kind of like self-compassion and healing around it, looking at my journey as a gift because I have had so many different paths even in entrepreneurship, you know, like I started out as self-care coach and then I was like um, a relationship coach. And then I was a, a video coach specifically just helping people around video. And then now I'm a business coach. And now, you know, like I'm shifting more into just like visibility focused. And what I realized though, is that the thread has always been the same. It's mm -hmm. always been like, I just want women to be fully expressed yeah. and to love all sides of themselves and to not hide that. Um, I really feel like that's like the gift. And so I love that you're saying this because I think so many people need to have compassion for themselves and the journey and that it doesn't mean that they weren't successful if they've had to shift and change. In fact, it means that they are innovating, right? If we go back to like innovation, like that's one of the key pieces is being willing to actually change and grow and expand. That's where like, yeah, I mean, I think, um, especially as a coach, right, you know, you're, I'm always supporting people and putting goals together, but I, I don't, I think people use goals and like, if they make a goal or miss a goal, they use it kind of like as a whipping post for themselves. Oh, <laughs> like God, you yes. about, what you said about like self-compassion. It's, yeah. you know, it's not really, I mean, it's, it's a point of learning. It's not a, it's not, you know, it's not a good or a bad thing. It's, you know, if you miss a goal, like what were the reasons why, you know, maybe that goal wasn't the right goal or maybe it wasn't the right time. Um, but you know, that I love what you said about self-compassion because I think that's, yeah. it comes right down to, it. I think we're always harder on ourselves than, you know, than anybody could ever be on us. And, and yeah. so it's, it's important to take that time. And I mean, one of the things I don't know, on my Facebook page, I have this, my banner says, you know, celebrate everything. I, I think we don't also celebrate our accomplishments. We're always looking at, okay, well, we did that. Okay. What's the next thing? And to really revel and celebrate the mm -hmm. accomplishments along the way is really important in that journey as well because otherwise yeah. i don't know yeah you're, you're going to end up like like you and i did right <laughs> sick and not, mm -hmm. or not well right and, yeah uh, really important to celebrate and to just acknowledge like oh yeah i did that and even yeah. if that's every day like before i go to bed i always try to 
It's like, yeah, I did that today. This, that was a good day. You know, I yeah. did that. Or, or tomorrow, I, I want to focus on this. Yeah, the celebration. I just, one of my private clients right now is just putting herself on that whipping post, mm-hmm. right? She set a, a big goal and, and it's looking different. And I, and I was like, look, right now you don't need to do more. You just need to sit down, have some sacred time to yourself and either meditate on all the amazing things that you have done and celebrate what you have done and really love yourself up around that, you know, um, or write it down in your journal, like just make it fun and feel good, have a candle, your essential oils, have some tea, like let's just really celebrate that. It's like, that is actually what will propel you forward to the next step, right? It's not the beating yourself up around what, what you, you didn't do or all the shoulda, coulda, wouldas or, yeah. yeah. I'm always amazed. I mean, especially working with clients or even like these women I was working with in India, they're like, well, we didn't do this. And, and then I list all the things or they list all the things they did do. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Let's examine this. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. I, I think we, I don't know where that comes from or why there, we have a society that's based on that, but yeah, it's a bigger, brighter, shiny object, probably. Totally. Yeah, I've been hosting. Um, I've been trying to do a monthly celebration circles where just uh-huh. anybody can come on Zoom here and just um, hold space for each other to celebrate one thing from the prior month that they probably didn't pause to reflect on and say, "Wow, I'm really proud of myself. I did this." And even if it's small, right? I think that there's this. There's also this concept around celebration of like, I have to have something big to celebrate. Well, what if it's just like, I took care of myself this month, you know, I I slept in, I, it can be so tiny. And those are like the gems. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cause you can, you lose sight of those things. I think when you're pushing so hard, I mean, that was the one realization when I, I mean, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm successful. I I achieved all the things I thought I wanted to do. And I was like, this is it. Like, really? (laughs) <laughs> I, was, I had like sacrificed all these things for so many years and yeah and I was like and it was great it was good but it was like oh that's that's it and I wasted you know those moments those little moments yeah, yeah the little moments. that's I think that's how you build a life of you know passion and purpose is really acknowledging where you are and mm-hmm. um, I try to do that at least every quarter like okay what's happened and, you know and then do I need to pivot do I need to move around a little bit Trying to where I'm going. Yeah, permission to change. Ah, so good. This conversation is so good, Tanya. Oh my gosh, we could talk forever. Um, I'm so grateful for you. And just as we wrap up, I'd love for you to share just anything that's on your heart or maybe anything that's exciting you that you're looking forward to in your life and your business, however you want to end. Well, I'm grateful for the time and for the conversation because it it always inspires me to talk to other women who are like-minded and doing great things in the world. So thank you for that opportunity. I appreciate that. And also grateful to Jude for connecting us. Um, I I am looking forward to, um, as I come out of this year, I think I'm, I'm really looking at discovering what's next. And my word this year is discover. So I'm, I'm in this place of, you know, just seeing what's next. Um, having said that, I'm always active. And um, so I'm running a women's, um, a women's leadership group um, that'll be coming up September 20, the weekend of the 20th in September. It'll be here in the Silicon Valley and it's just for women. It's, in, it's called Coming Into Your Own. And it's part of actually- Doing it at 1440? I'm not going to do it at 14. Oh, you're not this, this time. Okay. I've done it there three times already. This time, not, um, which is, it's a great place. Uh, but this program, um, Coming Into Your Own, is really an opportunity for women to just take some time to really look at their lives kind of holistically, evaluate where they are, who they are, and where they want to go next. So it's great if you're in a transition or maybe you've taken on a new role and you're not sure about things. Um, so it's a really, really nice gift to yourself. And there's some coaching um, afterwards as well. So I'll send you some information so you can. Yeah, please send that. We will include it in the show notes um, and then include, you know, all the ways to connect with you. Do you want to share yeah. like your, your main website right now? Yeah. So um, my website is T 
www.tanyamontsefbunger.com. So you can, that's one way you can contact me. I'm also on LinkedIn under Tanya Montsef Bunger. And yeah, wonderful. Uh, awesome. I'll, I'll show you the links if you have that as well. Okay, good. And um, for everybody listening, if you want to grab those links, um, you can go to the show notes page, which is jessicatomlinson.com forward slash show dash 25. This is episode 25. Uh, all right. So, I like the order. order. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what was that? I said, I don't know how many you're going for, but I'm thinking at least hundreds or thousands, right? You, totally. Yeah. We're going to keep this going. I love it. It's uh, one of my favorite ways to just um, not only shine the light on amazing women, but feed that need for connection for myself as well, speaking of connection. So, yeah. all right, Tanya, thank you so much. I adore you. Thank I'm you. so looking forward to um, sharing your work and being in your world and looking yeah, forward to you. people finding out more about you and connecting yeah. more deeply and with hopefully you. Hopefully we get to meet in person as well. I know, that would be amazing. Yeah. We'll make it happen. Yes, I hope so. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.